Well, good morning, Watermark. Most of you guys are watching this on the morning of December 26, 2021, but we know that anything we post online lives forever, so you may be watching it another time. But I'm sharing this today because we are not meeting in person for services today. Instead, I wanna share with you a conversation that I recently recorded with our lead pastor, Blake Holmes, and a Watermark member named Jenny Allen. And you'll get to know Jenny here in just a few minutes. This conversation is serving as a conclusion of a recent sermon series we did called The Story. And we'll be focusing this morning on your story and my story and what is the next chapter. Like I said, it's December 26th and oftentimes this week between Christmas and New Year's, we reflect on the past year and then we look ahead and plan for the next year. And so that is what we're going to be talking about this morning. But before we go there, I'd love to turn your attention to watermark.org slash news. Every single week, we share a story of one of the members of our church. And guys, let me tell you, reading a personal story, it's a great way to get to know us as a church. And more importantly, it's a great way to get to know the God that we serve. And while you're there, watermark.org slash news, if there is any way we could pray for you or connect with you, there's a section there that says, how may we serve you? And if you would just click that and give us your information, we'd love to follow up with you. All right, with all that said, let's go ahead and get to my conversation with Blake Holmes and Jenny Allen. All right, Blake and Jenny, we are here on the day after Christmas, and we're going to have a conversation that is an epilogue to a sermon series that we just finished called The Story. So, Blake, would you start us off by just telling everybody what was the story and what did that have to do with Christmas? Yeah. So the story was a reminder to us that we fit within a much greater story, the story of the Bible. The Bible is made up of 66 books, but it's really broken up into four major movements, creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. And it's those four major movements that serve as the foundation of a biblical worldview. Creation, who are we? Why are we here? Is there a God? Fall, what is the problem? And we all experience problems, pain, suffering, even death in this world. How did that start? Um, why do we experience that? Is there hope? Redemption tells us that there is hope and that God loves us despite our rebellion and um the way in which we have disobeyed him, he still loves us, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. So we can have hope um, in this world and be rightly related to him through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and then restoration, because history is not just a random occurrence of events, but history is the unfolding of God's prophetic providential will. And so we looked at the story of scripture over four weeks, and thought that was the right thing to do because it highlights what Christmas is all about, God with us. Mm. That's that redemption piece that all of history finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ and his love for us. And the first thing you said was our story fits within the bigger story. And we've been focusing on this bigger story, but really today we're gonna to be talking about our stories, especially as we head into a new year. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get there, but I wanna introduce everybody to you, Jenny. Uh, Jenny is a member uh, of our church, Watermark, uh, but she's also an author. Uh, you're a leader of some people may have heard of or participated in the If Gathering, but really you just love making disciples. And I noticed recently, uh, something you just put out there into the world for kids is called the story of God. And yeah. upon closer inspection, <laughs> it lined up exactly uh, with the story, the series. And so just tell us a little bit more about that. I thought that was an interesting coincidence. Well, it's a very well-known story. So yes, it's not it that surprising that we all <laughs> we all are aware of it. And But honestly, I did not fully understand it till seminary. And I had young kids when I was in seminary. And one of my professors, Howard Hendricks, he said something that I've never forgotten. He said, before the... Um, age of five, give your kids a huge faith. And so I, with kids that were that age, I was trying to do that. And I was learning all these huge concepts about God that were changing my life and understanding that story for the first time, even though I'd grown up in the church, I'd never had somebody tell me the whole, the whole story. And so I'd go home and try to teach my kids that. 
And and so to, to help with that, I, I built these tools. And it's taken 15 years to, you know, have them for the rest of the world. But it's super fun that the church is is teaching that and and it's really coming out at a similar time. So I just love that it synced up. I thought that was really cool. Sweet. Ginny, you do a good job of taking complex truths and making it mm-hmm. simple for other Thank people you. to understand. But that, that story, David, that we talked about, I think is helpful people to recognize. I think all too often we compartmentalize our lives, right, right, of how we live and is different from, we don't think about how our faith should inform our lives. But that story, like I said, informs a biblical worldview. It's the lens through which we should view our relationships, our work, um, you know, everything we do, our, inner, our, our play, our recreation. And so it's that story should inform everything we do. Well, I think that's a great transition. And really what we want to talk about with the rest of our time here is, um, man, I would say 2021 was a really hard year for me. And I've heard that from a lot of other people that like 2020 was tough, but 2021, I, I think it was actually worse. And I know reflecting on the bigger story this last you know five weeks that we've done that has helped me make a little bit of sense of the difficulty in my own story. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're presenting the body and anyone listening with a tool that they can use to reflect on their own story this past year and then look ahead and plan ahead for what their story might look like in the next year. So would you guys just talk to us about, hey, sometimes I just want to move past 2021 and not reflect on it, mm-hmm. but why should we reflect on it? And then sometimes I want to just live in the moment and not think about tomorrow, but why should we plan ahead for tomorrow? How would you guys answer those two questions? Reflection and planning, why are they important? Well, I would just start by saying, I think your response is a natural response. Mm-hmm. I, I think oftentimes we just, you know, if you if you think about the, the difficult times in your life, you just want to, you just want to work through them. You just want to get over it. It's kind of like swim to the other side, right? But oftentimes what happens there is sometimes we can miss what God's trying to teach us through that. It's a refining refining process. And so I think it's natural for us just to want to work through the hard, not feel the pain and the disappointment sometimes we're experiencing. But then I think we miss some of God's greatest lessons. So, You know, this is something my husband and I do every year. And what I found is I drift towards selfishness and laziness and Netflix, right? Like that's where I go. And and without a plan and without a purpose and an understanding of where I'm going, I I just go there. I, I waste time. I, I don't cause thriving to happen for my family. I don't cause thriving to happen for myself. I don't wake up and think, man, I just want to work out today. You know, there's not things that I choose for my good without planning and without some structure. So mm-hmm. I think the beauty of of God is he was a planner, right? He was intentional with a vision that he has, is, and will accomplish on this earth. And he had a strategy and a plan. And and we've got to realize too, we're up against an enemy that's very strategic. The enemy is clearly causing schemes to happen. It says that he causes schemes to happen in our lives. He is scheming all the time against us. And so if we are not scheming back and like saying, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resist the devil and I'm gonna choose the way of God, we we don't we we get apathetic and and life, as you said, is hard right now. And what happens when life is hard is we want to check out. We want to cope and we want to check out. And of any generation, I think we might have the most choices when it comes to that. We're right? distracted. Yeah, yeah we're, we're distracted. easily distracted. Easily. You know, I think about what Jesus says, the parable of the sower, right? Famous, probably the most famous parable, I guess, right? The sower goes and he throws the seed, some falls on the 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 road right? Some falls amongst the thorns. And, and what Jesus is trying to say there is that, hey, listen, his, I think God is continually trying to speak to us through his word, but we're so easily distracted. It, the pain, the suffering of the world, the temptations of the world um, drown out oftentimes, if we let it, his voice. And so we've got to take the time to stop, slow down, reflect, and listen. We've got to hear his voice and not just race to the next thing or try to just get through what's painful in our life mm-hmm. or numb, our, numb ourselves to death through entertainment or whatever coping strategies we have. So stopping, reflecting, seeking God, mm-hmm. and then looking ahead, really important. Um, and Jenny, you just said this is something you've been doing for a long time. And that's really one of the main reasons why you're here is that as you've been doing that, you came up with a tool. 
yeah. uh, that you've been sharing with people for a long time, but we've never had a chance to share with Watermark. And so we're doing that through this conversation. And I, I've got a copy of it right here. It's called uh, Your Next Chapter uh, to Fit with the Story Series. But it's it's a guide to kind of help people do an exercise um, to, to, as you were, you were talking about, to help people, I guess, be intentional yeah. with how they're going to approach 2022 or whatever next year they're entering into if they watch this later. Um, and so would you tell us a little bit more about the history of, sure. like, what actually do you do? And how, like, how have you been sharing this thing with yeah. others? What have you seen fruit-wise in other people's lives? Mm-hmm. So just tell us about this. Well, I think this season is one that often is filled with reflection and filled with vision casting, right? We're starting to think about the next year and what we hope. You know, oftentimes it's called New Year's resolutions. I just think it's being thoughtful about and listening to what God Mm -hmm. wants from us in in this next season. And my husband and I have always taken that very seriously. There are some people that hate that kind of thing. I'm personally in love with it. Like I've seen the good of it, of just reflecting over how is my relationship with each one of my kids? And what do we need to do with that specific kid that honestly is is more withdrawn and we don't totally know why. Like, so we we make a plan for each kid that, that we're parenting and stewarding their lives. We, we will be often driving during the season, right? So we'll, I remember before it was a tool that is printed like this so beautifully, it was my moleskin. And I just would write out each category of our lives. I'd take our relationships and I'd take our work and the work that God's assigned to us. And we'd take each part of that and say, how is that going? And how did it go last year? And and what's our what are we celebrating? Right? It's not just looking mm-hmm. back at difficult things. It's going, hey, we are we're slow to celebrate. We're slow to stop and to thank God for what He's done. And so it's a chance to do that. And then it also is a chance to look forward and say, okay, how could we be more intentional with that part of our lives? I see it less as re- resolutions because it's more planning than it is committing to work out every day or that kind of thing. Certainly, that's a part of it. It's taking care of our bodies and taking care of our minds and our our relationships, but but it's not so much um, goal setting as it is being intentional with what we've been given and stewarding it well. I think that is seen throughout our script, throughout the Bible, right? I mean, you see um, in the feasts that are given to Israel in the Old Testament, God very intentionally gives the nation of Israel opportunities to stop and reflect upon the goodness of God and the way he's worked in their life gives them a chance to look back and see, hey, we serve a God who's a promise keeper, a covenant keeping God. So I often think about what it would have been like to have grown up in a Jewish home and the Feast of Booths, right? That's a a time where um, families would gather and they would go camping. And why would they do that? To commemorate God's faithfulness in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be like, all right, kids, we're going camping. Why are we going camping? Because God was faithful throughout our journey to bring us to the promised land. And God wanted his people to remember that. Well, I actually love that that's the story you told because for me, often it's one night my husband and I will get away and we don't go camping. We go to, <laughs> we go to a really bougie hotel, okay? Um, it's one night and we go to, we go together and we we lay it out over two days. We really spend time with this and we re- because it takes a while to yeah. really look back and to look forward and to think and talk, give 30 minutes to a kid, one kid, yeah. and to do that with each of our kids and to do that with our job and our different projects that we have in our life and to do that with our health and, and so it takes a while. And so we really commit to two days where we just get away and we do this together. I don't think anybody should do it alone. I think, I think when you get alone, you get cynical. I think one of the gifts of community is it, it causes you to believe that you can, you can do more with God than you thought. And you could dream bigger dreams than you thought. And you could look back at old things that were difficult and see the good in them. That community does that, right? It builds our faith. It helps us have optimism. It helps us believe that that God could do more. So I think you can't do it alone. And I think you really need to set apart time. And my kids do it, not all of them and not every year. We're not those parents that force it, but but often they're like, hey mom, can you send me that thing you do? And 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 we'll send it to them and, and they'll print it out and they'll do it with their lives. I think kids at any age can start to learn the discipline of envisioning a life that pleases God and and how to walk in that in their different parts of their lives. Yeah, I'll, I'll add one more just kind of biblical idea to this is that think about what communion is. Communion, Jesus says, is a do this in remembrance of me. It's a chance to examine where you are, to look back at what Christ has done for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. And then also he says to anticipate what is to come, yeah. to look forward that someday we will be with him. And so um, this is a 
It's a thoroughly biblical idea. I think it's what God calls us to do, stop and reflect. I just don't think we take the time to listen. So that's why I'm excited about what we're offering, what Jenny's done with her family. I mean, imagine if more of us just paused to, to go through this exercise and be attentive. Hey, what's God trying to teach me through this? Well, here's what I love about this guide that we're putting out there, and we kind of haven't mentioned this. It's it's going to go with this video. It'll be emailed out to everybody that gets the current, which is our weekly email here at Watermark. And it's something that you actually have to download and print off. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not an online form right. that you fill out. There's something about the physical aspect of it, as you're describing the feast or communion, right. There's something tangible that we're doing. And even before this guide was available, you had your moleskin yeah. and a pen. And, and you're you're putting pen to paper. You're you're like doing an activity and then you're reviewing it with others. And as I was looking at this thing, I thought of two scriptures. One was Proverbs 21, 5, the first part of it. The plans of the diligent lead to abundance. Mm. This does require some action. Like you have to click download, you have to find a printer and print it. Then you've got to take the time. You got to set aside the time. You got to find a pen, and then you got to write it down. And then uh, another Proverbs fifteen twenty two: Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. And I love what you said about like, don't do this in isolation. Yeah. But maybe you do it at first alone, or just with your spouse if you're married. But then bring others into it and go, hey, how would you guide us? How would you sharpen our plans for next year? How would you help us? make sense of the past year. So that's really what we're trying to invite everyone to do. Help me see my blind spots. What could I have been missing? What am I not remembering? Yeah. I, th I think something also, David, which you see throughout scripture, you know, one of my favorite stories is when Israel crosses the Jordan, God says, hey, I want you to go get 12 stones and I want you to stack them. And the reason is, is because your kids are going to come along and go, what are these stones doing here? And then you'll get to tell them of my faithfulness. And so I think as you do look back and go through this exercise, think of something that God has done that um, you can celebrate with your family. And maybe, you know, um, maybe it's a picture you put on the wall, you know, uh, maybe maybe it's 12 stones, you know, or what it might be. So that year after year, you can remember God's faithfulness. And it gives you just a tangible reminder that when you run into something difficult, you see maybe something in your home and you go, but God is faithful. He saw me through in the past and he'll see me through in the future. My small group leader, Matt Moss, he often says force family fun and he has us do the stones at the end of the year. We do the guide together and we do the stones and we, we you know, and I love it's, it. it's- So you write on do, stones? Uh -huh, yes. Oh, wow, that's we, really we cool. We talk about vision for the year. We write several things that, that God's leading us to do. And, and I think what we've got to be, you know, I remember back many years ago, and I remember being afraid of dreaming dreams. I remember thinking it was ambitious, that it was selfish, that it was mm -hmm. um, possibly getting ahead of God. Mm -hmm. And I feel very differently now because what I've seen is as I've yielded to the Spirit and not just said, I'm going to build my own things and I'm going to do it mm -hmm. my way, but said, God, we really just want to honor you. We have a few years here, right? That's right? We only have a few. And we have within that year, a few days that seem to go faster and faster every year. And so with these days and this year, God, what do you want us to accomplish for your kingdom? The cloud of witnesses in heaven is watching us. Mm -hmm. Like we have a race that we are to run, each one of us as a family, as an individual, that he has put in our lives predestined before time, that he prepared good works for us to live in and to carry out and equipped us to do it. So, so there's a plan, right? We just gotta walk in it yeah. mm -hmm. and to listen long enough for him to reveal it to us. And to throw off the sin and the weight that so easily entangles us, because all of us are carrying a lot of that right now. And, and this helps us do it. It helps you name your sin, name your weight, your burden. Um, it helps you notice maybe what you haven't even had time to think about or talk about or be honest about. And then, you know, I'm someone who I can't, it's hard for me to share. When they put me on the spot in small group or whatever, which the, the culture of community in Watermark is crazy. Like just, I mean, like we bring our finances every year. I'm like, man, this is wild, but it's so healthy and it's so good. But for me to share it, I have to know what to share. And so mm -hmm. what you do next is you share it with other people. Mm -hmm. But, but sometimes first we have to reflect long enough that we even know what God's leading us to do or leading us away from. Well, you, you got to be known. Yeah. Right. And I think so often, um, we don't take the time to let others know us, maybe it's fear, insecurity, but to live in community and to reflect upon what God's trying to teach us throughout the year and go, hey, help me see 
um, what's that next step of faithfulness God may have me take this next year? Mm -hmm. This is this is not a, you know, we're we're not offering you know an inspired guide here. It's just a helpful <laughs> tool. tool. And yeah. and what I would say to people if they're intimidated by the tool or they're afraid to dream dreams, the question they need to ask themselves is, hey, what's the next step of faithfulness? As simple as that. Yeah. Like just to to pause and go, hey, what's my next step of faithfulness? What would God have me do? And um, and I, I love what has been put together because it does just allow you to evaluate many areas of your life. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, not just your spiritual life, but your theology should inform every area right. of your life, every area of your life, so that you do have that biblical worldview. Consider how you're spending your money. Consider mm -hmm. relationships at work or... or um, you know, the relationships you have within your home. That's a helpful exercise. All right, Blake, uh, Jenny just talked about dreaming dreams. And so I want to close with this question for you. Is like, what would your dream be for Watermark Community Church uh, related to this guide? Like, uh, you know, for the members of our church or anyone watching this, if they were to download this and go through it, like, what 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 do you hope to see in the future as fruit as a result of this exercise? My, this my answer is really simple. My answer is really simple. I want us to fall more in love with Jesus. I, I mean, I, I want us to have a bigger view of who God is. Years ago, there was this little book called that uh, that was called "Your God Is Too Small." Mm -hmm. I often think of that title. Yeah. I reread it not too long ago so because true. I think we have our our view of God is too small. I want us to fall more in love with God. And when we do that, I know we'll be able to better love people as well. Mm -hmm. But we need a bigger vision for who God is. We need a, we need a bigger theology. Um, and it starts with listening to his word and, um, and taking that next step of obedience. So fall more in love with Jesus. Thank you so much for saying that. Because I think some of us could be tempted to go, oh, good, I'm going to get this. And maybe I'll make more money this year. Yeah. Or maybe my life will be better. Or, you know, like I'll be able to work through some of my problems, and maybe some of those things will happen. Mm -hmm. But if we miss what you just said, I, I think we miss it all. We miss it all. Yeah. We, we we miss it all. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, God's not going to ask us, hey, how much money did you make? Right? He's, he's going to ask us, hey, what did you believe about my son Jesus? Did you did you believe me? Did you walk with me? Mm -hmm. And um, And faithfulness isn't measured in what we have in the bank or what we accomplish at work. It's our faithfulness to the Lord. Well, and I think it's important to, to mention that we're all tired, right? I mean, you said it earlier, this is a hard year. I don't feel like dreaming dreams right now. I'm tired. I don't, <laughs> like we've all been in survival mode, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we're all just a little bit weary and that's okay. And God can work with that. And this isn't something where we're just trying to make this the best year ever. This is just something where we're just trying to be faithful with what we've been given mm -hmm. and obedient with what we've been given. And so take that pressure off. And, and we all kind of collectively are struggling a little mm -hmm. bit. And, and there's something bonding about that. And I think that's where our community even helps us more because they push us forward and they help us do it. I, I agree with you. I, you said this year is hard. You said, hey, we've yeah. been, we're tired. Um, and I agree with that. But don't miss the opportunity, the moment, I think, to stop and reflect and say, hey, Lord, what are you trying to teach me through that experience? So it's, it's a great moment to slow down. Well, when people download this, if there's going to be a letter at the beginning from our church's elders, uh, but they give you a shout out Aww. because <laughs> you put this thing together. And so I just want to thank, thank you. you. Thank you for putting it together. Thank you for sharing it with us freely. We didn't have to pay you a dime. Not a dime. <laughs> and we repurposed it and slapped Aww. the story branding on it and we're sharing it with everybody. Um, and so we love being on the same team with you. I love it too. And thank you Very for joining us today for this conversation. I think everybody's going to be encouraged. Thanks. Blake, would you close us in a word of prayer? Absolutely. And then uh, and then we'll kind of wrap everything up. Absolutely. Father in heaven, um, thank you for giving us your story and preserving it in your word yes. that we could read. And we could see how... Um, our lives fit within a much bigger story. I, I know there's people today who are listening to this who uh, can't make sense of what's happening around them. Mm -hmm. And so I just pray that by the power of your spirit, they would, um, they would read your word and they would be reminded that you are writing their story, that you're providentially at work in their lives and you always have their best interest in mind. 
And so we thank you for that. We rejoice in that, that we just celebrated Christmas, the God with us, mm -hmm. Emmanuel. Yes. And, um, and so, Lord, you didn't leave us to, to live a life of wondering and um, in isolation and fear and trembling, uh, but you entered into our world of pain through your son, Jesus. And so thank you for, um, for the gift of Christmas. And I pray, Lord, that we would take the time this year to slow down and reflect, and we would get a much bigger vision and view of who you are. And in light of that, that all of our problems and anxieties would quickly be cast away. And so we thank you. Thanks for a friend like Jenny and Zach and for David and his leadership in our church. Thank you for the body of Christ at yes. Watermark. And, um, and Lord, for their faithfulness throughout this past year. And I pray you would do great things um, in the year ahead as we fall more in love with you. We pray this by the power of your spirit and the name of your son. Amen. 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 All right, friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Blake Holmes and Jenny Allen. And I hope you'll join us next Sunday for our first service of the new year. That's right. We'll be right here at 9 and 11, 15 a.m. You can join us in person or online. Before you go, I want to tell you about one more thing. Watermark is a church who reads the Bible. And not only that, we read the Bible together. After all, community is our middle name. So we've got a Bible reading plan called Join the Journey. And my friend Emma Daughter is here to tell you just a little bit more about it. And after you hear from her, get off your screens and have a great week of worship. Hey, Watermark family. My name is Emma Daughter, and I am so passionate about all believers being equipped to know and understand God's word. And I am pumped to be jumping in with the Join the Journey team this year as we study the New Testament, just one chapter a day. And there are so many ways you can join this year. We've got the daily devotionals accessible through the website and app. Plus, we're launching a new guided journal if you wanna join without a screen. And we're launching a daily podcast to help you dive deeper into the text. There's so many ways to join, but however you do, what's important is that we're reading the Bible together. I'm so excited to see what God's going to teach us this year on the journey.